We are now recording, and we'll go from current slide, but before I start on the slide, let me go over these few last announcements, okay? Um, they start with next week. I don't think there's anything unusual this week, but next week there are some issues, okay? Nothing major, but just some issues. And the first is, next Tuesday, one week from today, I have a doctor's appointment. Uh, this is my hematologist. Uh, that's been snuck in without me seeing it and tried to get by me, but I caught you, okay? So you're here. Okay, anyone else? Tried to be like me. Okay. Uh, the, uh, next Tuesday, I have a doctor's appointment. This is my hematologist who only sees patients on Tuesday mornings. I can't schedule around those at all because that's the only time he sees patients. The appointment's for 11, but I have to go in for blood work at 10, meaning I have to leave here at 9.15. So that's right when this class ends. So next Tuesday, as soon as this class is over with, I'm out the door, okay? So remind me of that in case I get long-winded or something. I'm sure y'all wouldn't. Okay, uh, secondly, I don't know the details on this yet. I should, but I just don't have them at my fingertips. Does any not one know any details about the Honors and Awards Day ceremony? This is tomorrow. Yeah, isn't it next Thursday? Not the day after tomorrow, but the, the following. And I think it's back on the Birmingham campus. For a long time, we had it out here, but I think they moved it back to the Birmingham campus. Uh, I don't know for sure. I don't know exactly what time, but it could affect this class. If it's early enough and it's over there, it probably will affect the class some, okay? All right, I'll let y'all keep looking. The last part of the announcement is, oh, well, let's go back to my doctor's appointment. Even though it won't affect this class any, it will affect my office hours on Tuesday of next week because my appointment's at 11, so I hope to be through at 12, hopefully back here by 12.45, so that means my office hours on Tuesday of next week, which normally are 10.45 to 1.15, are now going to be closer to, what did I say, 12.45 to 1.15, you know, really short on Tuesday. Thursday, April 13th, that's yeah, one week yeah. from the day after tomorrow. Huh? Nine o'clock on which campus? Birmingham. Birmingham. Okay. So with it being at nine o'clock, uh, I'll have to leave here, and it starts at nine, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I need 30 minutes to go over there, so that would be 8.30, but I'm sure we're supposed to be there before, you know, that time. <coughs> <laughs> Are any of you participating? Okay, what time do you have to be there? <coughs> do they have a set time, Jeff? Not for What's that? Not for Okay. Uh, but generally, how much early do y'all need to be there? <laughs> Don't say that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a good chance. Well, I'll, I'll know more by Thursday. There's a good chance that next Tuesday we may not have class. Uh, what we may do is have just a very short class, and the question is then, do we try to make it up? No, we'll, we'll talk about that on Thursday. Uh, once I mark, uh, I find them first. Tyrell Tower, here. Okay. Anyone else have an interest to call the roll? Okay, so this week's fine, but next week, Tuesday, my office hours are modified, in fact, restricted very greatly because we've got a doctor's appointment. Uh, Thursday, we may not even have class, but we'll talk about this either next Thursday, coming Thursday or Tuesday. We'll, we'll work that out by then. And then finally, Friday, normally I have office hours. This is next week, not this week, on the Birmingham campus from 7.45 until 1 o'clock. Well, I have an infusion next Friday. That's at 8 o'clock, so I have to be there before, by 745, so I won't be on Birmingham campus then, and it goes all day, generally. It usually is a eight-hour affair, so I won't be on Birmingham campus at all on 
Friday of next week. I'll be there this week. So, sorry to take to, so long with that. All right, we remember everything from two weeks ago, right? We were, what was the last thing we were doing? Anyone recall? Please say yes. Don't lie, though. Okay. Basically, what we're doing, we're finding zeros of polynomials, right? Now, why are we moving to factoring polynomials now? Is there any relationship? Say again. Absolutely. Okay. If you think about factoring quadratics, which we've been doing for, what has it been? I don't know, Math 98 or something in high school or wherever. Okay. When you were doing that, once you factored them, if you set it equal to zero and factored them, then you found the zeros. Okay. Well, now we're doing the other way. We find the zeros. Let's say, give me a zero. Make up a zero for a polynomial. Two. So if x equal two is a zero of that polynomial, what can you guarantee me is going to be a factor of that polynomial? If x equal two is a zero, say that x minus two is the factor. Exactly, because subtract 2 from both sides, you get x minus 2 equals 0. Okay, there it becomes a factor. So, finding zeros, factoring polynomials, they go hand in glove. All right, the linear factorization theorem shows us that you can write any, any nth order polynomial, nth order degree polynomial, as the product of n linear factors. Now, this is the linear factorization theorem. Okay, but let's also remember that these factors, these C's and the factors, don't have to be integers. Okay, when we factor polynomials, we usually deal with integers. Sometimes come up with rational numbers. They don't have to be rational numbers. They could be irrational numbers. They could be complex numbers. Okay. That's why up till now we had said up to n linear factors or n zeros. Now we say we can get that many, but some of them could be complex numbers. Plus, some of them could be repeated. Remember, if you had x minus 2 squared, that's a, a dual polynomial. So that'd be x minus 2 times x minus 2. Two of these could be the same number, or 15 of them could be the same number. However, this result includes the possibility that some of the values of ci, some of those values could be irrational, they could be complex, and they could be repeated. Okay? But you can find them all, theoretically. Uh, this is on the top of page 159 uh, in section 2.5. Okay. The following theorem states that even if you do not want to get involved with complex factors, you can still write f of x as a product of linear and or quadratic factors. So if you, and we're not going to mess with the complex factors any because that's not in the course description. You know how to do it, but we're not going to mess with those. But still you can write it as a combination of linear and quadratic factors. You just won't have n factors anymore. If you have, for every quadratic you have, you're going to reduce the n by 1. Okay? So the factors of a polynomial, every polynomial of degree n greater than 0, so n is equal 1, 17, 45, whatever, with real coefficients, now that's the key here, real coefficients can be written as a product of linear and quadratic factors with real coefficients. No complex numbers there. Where the quadratic factors have no real zero. Okay, the quadratic factors you're left with, if you factor them further, they give you complex zeros. So we're going to stick with those uh, with real zeros. Okay, so you won't have n factors anymore because every time you have a quadratic, it reduces the number of factors you have by one because it's a quadratic. It contains two complex factors, perhaps. Okay, a quadratic factor with no real zeros is said to be prime or 
irreducible over the reals. Can anyone give me a quadratic factor with no real zero? Quadratic factor with no real zeros. So quadratic means the variable would have to be with what power? Two. Quadratic, yeah, okay. Remember, it sounds like four, but it's really two. Okay? So it's going to have an x squared in it. And we want to finish the quadratic. Plus x squared plus one. Can you factor that any further? Not in the real number system. Okay? So we would call that a prime factor or, irredu or irreducible over the real number system. Notice that this is not the same as being irreducible over rational. That was the things that gave you irrational numbers, as in x squared minus 2. Okay? That can be factored but you'll have irrational numbers as factors. That would be ir irreducible over the rationals, but we're dealing with over the real. So we'll go on and factor that as x plus or minus the square root of 2. Having ir uh, irrational numbers, we're just not going to have complex numbers. For example, the quad... Uh, where were you looking, folks? It's right there. x squared plus 1 is x plus i times x minus i irreducible over the reals, therefore, of course, over irrationals as well. Uh, we're we're going to leave it in this form. We're not going to take it down that far. However, and here's the other one, x squared minus 2, that's x plus square root of 2 times x minus the square root of 2. That's irreducible over the rational numbers, but it is reducible over the reals. Okay? So we will factor that that far. Okay? Now, what device will we use most of the time to get the uh, irrational numbers? So what, what tool will we use to get to find those? Quadratic formula, exactly. That will give you those. It will also let you know when you have these. Okay? And if we have these, do we let it go? We stop. If we have these, we carry it on further. Okay. So let's do example seven. All right. And there's Jeremy. If I can find where you are. Okay. Find all the real zeros of f of x equal x squared minus 3x plus 6x squared, I mean 3x cubed, plus 6x squared plus 2x minus 60, given that 1 plus 3i is a 0 of f. So here we are. They say we're factoring polynomials, but here we're finding zeros again. Okay? Like I said, they basically are yin and yang. They, they, one leads to the other. Now, what does this tell you? It's a 0. And what kind of number is this? A complex number with imaginary parts. Okay? Seven is a complex number, but it just doesn't have any imaginary parts. That's a complex number with imaginary parts. What kind of coefficients do we have there? Coefficients of the function. Yes, they're all real coefficients. And if you have real coefficients of your polynomial, and you know you've got one irrational, I mean, uh, complex uh, factor with imaginary parts, guess what else you know? Is a second. What would be the second? One minus three i. They always come in conjugate pairs. It was a long time since we were last meeting, right? Long time. Okay. So yes, since they told us that we have one, we now know there's another because that's an uh, irrational, I mean, it's a complex number, so 1 minus 3i is also a 0. Okay? Now, there's two ways we could proceed with this. We could, and I think this is probably the easiest, 
we could multiply those two together. And you could probably do it almost in your head, can't you? If not, multiply them. Anyone know why we're doing that? You'll come up with a quadratic factor, right? Because anytime you multiply two uh, complex numbers, conjugates of each other, you're going to come up with a quadratic with real coefficients. Okay? That's why we're doing it. So how do we multiply those two together? 1 plus 3i times 1 minus 3i. None of you can do it in your head. Let's do it brute force. What would you use? Foil it. Okay. First gives us 1. That was easy. Then outer gives us minus 3i. Inner gives us plus 3i. There it goes. There goes the i's, folks. Or at least two of them. And then finally the last is minus 9i squared. Which is, yeah, because I squared is negative 1, so this will be plus 9. 1 plus 9. Okay. Wait a minute. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I left something out. I left out my x's. Okay. It's x plus 3i. And I, yuck, I can't even write. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Okay. <laughs> the eraser is not working either. Okay. We needed to write these as factors. That's what we should be multiplying together. Okay. So let's write them as factors. What would be the factors? These are our zeros. What are our factors? In other words, this is x equal 1 plus 3i is a 0, and x equal 1 minus 3i. That's a 0. What are our factors? Someone just said it earlier. X. Say again. Don't you? Yeah, subtract 1 from both sides and subtract 3i from both sides. Okay. There's a factor. Set it equal to zero if you want to. Okay? And this one would produce x minus 1 plus 3i. Those are our factors. Forget this up here. Okay? These are what we multiply together. x minus 1, well, I'll put plus 3i first. I didn't mean to, but I will. Times x minus 1 minus 3i. Those are our two factors. Those we've got to multiply together. Now, this isn't quite foiling anymore. You could treat the complex part as if it's a single unit and foil it that way. That's a little awkward. So let's just do term by term by term. So let's do the first terms first. And what does that give you? x squared. Now do the first times the second, and that'll give you minus x, then do the first times the third, and that gives you minus 3ix, right? Okay, now let's do the second term by each of the others. What does that give you? Minus x uh, plus 1, and second plus 3i. Okay. Now, notice how I chose to space these out. All right. Now, let's do the third time each one. That one will give you... Let's do a different color for that. Pick a color. Say again. Carolina blue. Yes, after UNC. National champions, okay? Didn't know you were such a basketball fan. Okay. That would be what? Plus 3ix. Next one. Minus 3i. And the last one. 
minus 9i squared. We've seen that before, haven't we? All right, now I'll go back to black, I guess, or dark. Anyway, so here we have a x squared. What do we have next? Minus 2x, and what do we have next? 0, right? And this is going to give us a zero. There goes our eyes. Bye-bye, eyes. Okay, so far. Then we have a plus one. And then what does that minus nine I squared become? Plus nine. So we can simplify one more step. X squared minus two X plus ten. Okay. Try factoring that if you will, and you'll find you can't. Uh, and it won't turn out irrational if you use the quadratic formula either. You'll come up with uh, complex numbers. And here's how you can tell. Remember your discriminant, d squared, that would be a 4, minus 4ac, minus 4 times 1 times 10, that would be minus 40, plus 4 minus 40 is minus 36. No way that's going to be a positive number. Not going to have a, a rational or irrational zero. So there's our quadratic factor. Why did we go to all that trouble to find it? We know that's a factor of this polynomial. They told us that anyway. So what do we do with that? Any ideas? Help me out here. It's been a long time since with spring break, you know, and everything. What are we going to do with that? Say again? Say again? Okay, sort of. What we just said, it's a factor of this polynomial, isn't it? So how can we find the other factors? Say again? Okay, you can't do synthetic division because the lead, you know, that's not a one. Okay, the, but you do do... Long division. I knew you'd love that. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I think I've got to erase more than this. So you know what we've done so far. Oh, I've still got my eraser going. So let's get rid of all this except our answer. Because we want to hang on to that. That was a lot of fun, but we get, need the space. Long division takes some room. Hope there, <laughs> late to ask. This. Everybody had that, right? Okay. I don't know what the little box is up there for. I don't know why that was on. Okay. So we're going to do long division. We're going to divide x squared minus 2x plus 10 into x fourth minus 3x cubed plus 6x squared plus 2x minus 60. Now, two things I should have done before I wrote any of that down. Remind me what I should have done. I really did it, but I didn't make a point of it. Say again? Yes, make sure that every term is accounted for. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, black box, okay? Same thing out here, too. 2, 1, 0, last off, okay? The other thing that's involved with that is make sure it's in order of descending powers, which, the way she did it, it did guarantee that. So you've accounted for every term, you've got them in descending order of powers, so we can start our long division. What would we do? Okay, divide. X squared into X fourth, how many times? x squared. Now we multiply. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times minus 2x is minus 2x cubed. x squared times 10 is plus 10x squared. Then what do we do? Change signs and add. Minus, plus, and then I have to make that one a minus. Easy to do on here, probably not as easy to do on pencil and paper. Okay, and add. 
goes away. What does this leave us with? A little louder. Negative x cubed minus 4x squared and bring down a 2 plus 2x. Okay, where do we go from here? All right, divide again. x squared will go in the negative x cubed how many times? Negative x times. Then we do what? Multiply. Negative x times x squared is negative x cubed. Negative x times negative 2x is plus 2x squared. And negative x times a positive 10 is, is what? Positive. Eh. Negative times positive is negative 10x. Okay? Then what do we do? Change signs and add. You could subtract if you don't mind subtracting sign numbers, but I get confused, so I like to change signs and add. That will make this a plus, and that a plus, and make the middle one a minus. Okay? So, let's add them now. What happens to the first? They go away. Okay? Add to zero. Next, negative 6x squared plus 12x minus 60. What do we do now? Divide again. x squared into minus 6x squared would be negative 6. Ooh, my thing is collapsing on me. Negative 6. Then we multiply negative 6 times x squared is negative 6x squared. Negative 6 times minus 2x is plus 12x. And negative 6 times positive 10 is minus 60. And guess what would happen then? Change size and add. Everything goes to 0. They were absolutely right. That was a 0. Its conjugate was a 0. The product of those factors gave us a factor. Divide that factor into the whole polynomial, you get another polynomial. What do we do with that? Factor it again, okay? But I thought we were finding zeros. We are, but you do it by factoring, okay? So does this factor? Let's hope it does. If not, we'd have to use what? Quadratic formula. So x and x plus and minus, and what did you say? x minus 3, x plus 2. Let's see if that works. This one will fall. x times x is x squared. Minus 3x plus 2x is minus x, and minus 6 is minus 6. Fantastic, we've got it. So, it said find all the zeros. I should have should not have raised one. They gave us this was one. That enabled us to know that x minus 3i was also a 0, but now we've got two factors. What can we do with that? Set it equal to 0 and what? Either x plus 2 is equal to 0 or x minus 3 is equal to 0. And if you have x plus 2 equals 0, what does that give you? Yeah, subtract 2 from both sides, you get x equal negative 2, or add 3 to both sides, and that gives you x equal 3. We found all the zeros. They gave us one. We knew this would be another one. Once we found the other factor, then we could factor that further. That gave us the last two zeros. If you find factors, you know the zeros. If you find zeros, you know the factors. Right? Good deal. Okay. Now, what was the other way we could have approached this problem? I know this is thinking back a long time ago. We know the answer. Can y'all remember the answer if I erase it off? Maybe better if you don't, okay? I'm going to erase it off. What was our other technique for finding the zeros? Say again? Okay, try to factor that. Is that what you're saying? 
Yeah, that's a five-term polynomial. Say again? Yes, you use the constant and the, line, and the leading coefficient. How do we use those? It's called the rational zeros test. Remember that? And that says that the, the possible factors here are going to be P over Q, rational numbers, P over Q, where P is uh, all the possible factors of your constant term, which would tell me what those would be. I need more room. I know it. In, in my bones, I know it. Okay? So X equal P over Q, where all the possible factors of minus 60, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 6, not 7, finally, okay? How about 8? No, nope, not 8 either. Not 9, huh? Plus or minus 10, not 11. Say so I get 15, plus or minus 12, plus or minus 15. Here, here's what you do. I don't. I think some of you are already doing it. For every one of these, you're going to have one out here. So we got down through here. Uh, 6 times 10 is 60, right? 5 times 12 is 60. 4 times 15 is 60. 3 times 20, plus or minus 20, plus or minus 30, and plus or minus 60. So that's the easy way to do it. Once you got the small numbers, the big numbers are a little easier. I need more room. Uh, plus or minus, what did I say, 20? Plus or minus 30? And plus or minus 60. You think we got enough to work with? I believe so. Huh? More than enough. But the good news is, what's your denominator? Plus or minus 1. So basically, we only have those. Now, it gets a little better, okay? Remember, the plus one's the easy one to do. What we do is add the coefficients together. Because that's all you're doing with x equal 1, right? Is add those coefficients together. So the coefficients are 1 minus 3, 6, 2, and minus 60. Now, how many coefficients should you have? Five. One more than your degree. Okay? And we got them. Let's add them together. No way in the world that's going to come up being zero. Right? So one is out of there. Plus one is out of there. But we still got minus one. So let's try minus one, and we check this by synthetic division. This is review, folks. Okay? We don't have to do this, but I thought the answers are coming so slowly. <laughs> Let's go on and get the review. What do we do next? Drop the 1 and multiply. That gives us minus 1, minus 4, plus 4, 10, minus 10, negative 8, positive 8. No way that's going to give you a 0, is it? Scratch that. Okay, plus 1's out, minus 1's out. Okay? What do you want to try next? Minus 1's out. 2. Okay, let's try 2. What will that give us? 2. Negative 1, negative 2, 4, 8, 10, 20. Two's out too. Say again? I don't want to do that. Okay? It's a nice thought, but here's why I don't want to do it. 
I remember what my zeros were. I thought you would too. What we're going to try next, if we cross out plus 2, now let's try minus 2. What does that give us? Negative 2, negative 5, 10, 16, Do you still want to jump up to four? Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Ding, ding, ding. We found a zero. X equal negative two. Now what you should do next, try your negative two again. I know it sounds crazy, but you really should try because it could be a repeated zero. So let's try negative two again. And we don't have to go back to the original. We can use the quotient because we had a remainder of zero. Skip a line, draw a line, drop down the one. Continue. Second, negative 2, negative 7, 14, 30. Minus 60. Nope, not quite. Okay, negative 2 worked once, but it didn't work the second time. Okay, so... What will we try next? Okay, I, okay, negative two's out. Uh, negative two worked, so let's write it down. X equal negative two, that's a zero, so we found a zero. And then the next one, three. Negative two was out uh, the second time, okay? So we'll try three. Whoops, I left the sign there. I didn't mean to. Okay. Continue. Three. Negative two. Negative six. Ten. Thirty. Zero. We found another zero. X equal three. Remember, we found that before, too, right? Skip to four. Okay. Now, okay. <laughs> All right. What are we left with down here? Three numbers, which means a quadratic. Exactly. We can use quadratic formula. Let's write this back as a, as a polynomial. What would that be? X squared minus 2X plus 10. Have we seen that before? Yes, we have. Now we go up and use this. If x1 plus 3i is a 0, then we know 1 minus 3i is. We can still use that. We could have done it at the very beginning like we did before. We've got our four zeros. That's all we can get, folks. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's all she wrote. Don't look for any more. Fourth degree polynomials can't have more than four zeros. It will have exactly four zeros. Counting multiplicity, counting complex conjugates, and uh, uh, say, irrational conjugates. Okay. So we found them all stop. So I don't know which was quicker. Okay? Yeah, I think I like this better. But, but I know they wanted us to do the other way because they had it in the book. But I did want to show you you aren't restricted to that. All right. Okay, question. Yes. If they gave you this, you know that. Know. You know it. Okay. If, if you have real coefficients, which we do. Okay. So you know that. So all you have to do is find two more and you found them, okay. you're done. Yeah. Two because it's a fourth degree. If that had been a fifth degree, you'd have to keep looking until you got three more. Okay. If it was seventh degree, keep looking until you get five more. Okay. But, yeah. But when you get this, we've already noted that's not factorable. And even quadratic formulas don't give you complex numbers. There is a checkpoint there. Hint, hint. Take advantage of it. So okay. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm just looking for answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what's more, I'm looking for correct answers. So as long as you do it right.
that'll be fantastic. Okay. I thought she wanted my picture. My goodness, she's taking <laughs> pictures of the board. No, I'm just kidding. It's perfectly fine. Take it. Okay. And it's out there on, it will be on YouTube as well. <laughs> Except the picture doesn't have any talking. So, yes, go ahead. Okay. All right. Going back to what we did before. Okay. Yeah. We know that x equal 1 plus 3i is a 0. They told us that. Then we knew that x equal 1 minus 3i is a 0 because you had real coefficients to use a complex conjugate. Okay. Now you write that as factors, and that would be x minus 1 minus 3i is equal to 0. You subtract 1 and subtract 3i from both sides. Is that the part? Okay. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. And then this would be x minus 1 plus 3i. You got those, right? You could. You could do that. Uh, but I'm just used to having an X leading with a positive sign. Okay. That's the only reason I didn't do it. But you could do it. It's absolutely correct. Yeah. Okay. If these two are zeros, if that equals zero, that means these are your factors. That one times that one. So X minus 1 minus 3I times X minus 1 plus 3I. Now the part, is that... Okay, that is factor. Now you be multiplying them together. Okay. Okay, what we did there is just like foiling, except it's too long a word and it doesn't spell anything. Okay, uh, that's the only advantage of foiling. You only had two and two, F O I L. That's it. This is six things, you know. Okay, so what you do is multiply. Okay, let's go back. Let's do one. 1, 3, times 1, 2, 3. What if you're multiplying those two numbers together? What would you do? 3 times 3, 3 times 1, 3 times 1, 3 times 3, 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 3 just like you did here. That's what you're doing when you multiply. Nothing different except they look different. So what we do is multiply x by x. And we usually start at the left here. You could start at the right if you wanted to. We did for numbers. So that would be x squared. Then you do first times second. Okay. Minus x. Then you do first times third. Plus 3i x. Okay? Then you do second times first. And that would be minus x. And I like to put them under the ones they belong to. And then second times second is plus 1. We didn't have a plus, you know, so we just put that there. And then we do second times third, and that's a minus 3ix. Those were, no, 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 no. Sorry wrong. I was hoping it would be that, but it's not. Okay. That's minus 3i. Didn't have it, anything like that up top. Okay. Now we do with Carolina blue. Okay. The third by each. Minus 3ix. That's the one that goes here. And plus 3i and third times third is plus or minus 9i squared. Okay. Now, if you arrange them that way, it's real easy to see those add to zero and those add to zero. And you get x squared. Let's go back to black or dark anyway. 
x squared, that's that one, minus 2x, that's that one, those two, these disappeared, plus 1, those disappeared, and this would be, now do you get that? Oh, you did. Shame on you. Okay. Yeah, they're both minuses, so you can't. Only plus minus, you can add to zero. Minus minus adds to two minus, minus two. Okay? So, you got it now? Good deal. Nine I squared, you got that? Okay, good, 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 good. All right. Any other questions about this? Example seven. All right. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I forgot. Let me erase all this. Everybody got it so I can erase it? Okay. <clears throat> we did it. Now let's see how they did it. Because the complex zeros occur in conjugate pairs, when you have real coefficients, you know that x1 minus 3i is also a zero of l. Okay. This is going back into the long way. I mean the multiplication way. That means that x minus this and x minus this are factors of x. So they took an extra step here. If this helps you, do the extra step. But the next thing you got to do is clear the parentheses, distribute that minus sign across the parentheses, and that gives you... Oh my word, did they do it strangely, which is fine, okay? They readjusted, so this is another way. X minus 1 here, plus 3i. X minus 1, minus 3i. Okay, X minus 1, minus 3i is this one, sorry. And X minus 1, plus 3i is that one. So that's a little different. Now you have a difference of two perfect squares. Oh, there you go. The product of the sum times the difference of the same two numbers. This thing squared minus that thing squared, okay? So this is a little bit easier to do if you notice that. I didn't bother noticing that, okay? And that gives you x minus 1 squared minus 9i squared. So you save a little there, but you still got to square that binomial, and that gives you x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus 9. So you got there just a little bit quicker. But... I'm not sure I would have picked up on that. I didn't pick up on it, but even if I was even thinking about it, it's so easy to make mistakes that way. But it certainly is an easier way to do it. But now that you've got that being a factor, you can divide that into your problem. And just like we did, they put their quotient, they skewed it down. If you like doing it that way, do it that way. They came up with the same numbers we did and found the numbers do have a remainder of zero that meant everything was right so far and now what we do factor that last one okay that would be x squared minus 6 x minus 6 factor that further x minus 3 times x plus 2 so we now know what the four zeros are the one they gave us is conjugate pair and x equal 3 x equal minus once you know the factors, you know the zeros. Once you know the zeros, you know the factors. Hand in glove. Okay? Any questions on that? All right. In example seven, without being told that one plus three is a zero, you can still find the zeros by using synthetic division, just like we did, okay? And then you could come up, get it down to that last one that you cannot factor the real numbers. You can use quadratic formula and you'll get these two. But guess what? We can stop here. We're not taking it the rest of the way. You know how to do it, but why bother? So let's just take it to your uh, quadratic, uh, a series of linear and quadratic factors. Take it there. These give us zeros exactly. The others we know are going to be complex. Okay. We knew that one. It's going to be complex. Okay. Now, they're skipping example eight. 
Don't you think we have time to do it? Whoops. Let's do it here. How we do it? Yes. Huh? Yeah, we can get, get it done. So let's do example eight. Write alpha of x, I can do that, is equal to x to the fifth plus x cubed, bell should be ringing, okay, plus 2x squared minus 12x plus 8. As a product of linear factors and list all the zeros of the function. How would you recommend we proceed? Second? They didn't give us any. No. They just give us that and say, you find it. They're doing none of the work for you this time. Say again? P and Q, exactly. Get your P's and Q's together, okay? So this is called the rational zeros test, that your X's are going to be factors of P over Q, where P is what? All the possible factors of positive 8, which are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 8. A lot fewer than we had before, and guess what your denominator is? Plus or minus 1. Oh, I like it when it's that. It makes it easier. Okay, what you want to try first? The 1. That's so easy, you just take your coefficients. What are your coefficients? One. Zero. He caught it. One. Two. Negative twelve. Eight. While well, I write those down, we're going to use them anyway. Okay? Let's add them together. Okay? Here's eight and two is ten, eleven, twelve, minus twelve. Ding, ding, ding. We've got us a zero. X equal one is a zero. But guess what? You still got to do synthetic division with it to take you to the next step. So you know that one there should give you a thing. See why I wrote them down like that? Because I knew I was going to use them. Notice you had to have six of them because their maximum degree was five. Okay. Had to have them in the order of descending order. We had it. Zero in there. Got it. Next step. Bring down the one. And you get one, one, boy, y'all are stuck, aren't you? Okay. Two, okay, better. Two, four, four, negative eight. Say again, negative eight. We knew it was going to be because we knew that had to be one. Okay. Guess what we have to do again, though? Try one again. And guess what? We can add again. 4 and 2 is 6, 7, 8. Yes, that's going to be. 1's going to be another 0. Now, you can only do that with 1, but do it, okay? You know it's going to work again. We've got a repeated 0 here. So x equal 1 and his brother x equal 1. Okay, next. Wow, well, I shouldn't have done that yet, but it's okay. Continue. One, two, two, four, four, eight, eight, zero. We knew that was going to happen, didn't we? You think one may work again? No, it won't. Those are not going to add to be zero. No way. They're all positive. Now, time out, folks. I'm going to cheat. We haven't gotten there yet. I'm going to tell you something. When you wind up with all pluses here, don't try any more of your pluses. It ain't going to work. Just like one's not going to work, none of those pluses. So skip the other pluses, go to your negative. So what negative you might try first? Negative one. So let's see what happens there. One. Negative one. And. 1, 
Negative 1, 3, not going to work, is it? Okay, so negative 1 won't work. Oops, I shouldn't have erased the minus sign. But don't even try the pluses anymore. They're not going to work. I'll tell you that. So let's try negative 2. What does that give you? Negative 2, 0, 0, 4, negative 8, 0. We got us another one, minus 2. Okay? And what have we got down here? Three numbers, which represents a quadratic. So don't go any further with synthetic division. Rewrite that as a quadratic factor. What would that be? X squared plus 4. You think you can factor that any further? Not rationally, not uh, really. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. It's going to be complex. Anyone know what they'll be? Plus or minus 2i. Those are our last ones, 2i and minus 2i. You don't need to go any further. If this was the problem I was giving you, I wouldn't have said find the zeros for it. Uh, or even the linear factors, I'd have said find the factors. Okay? The factors would be, if these are our zeros, what are our factors? X minus 1 times X minus 1, X plus 2, and then X squared plus 4. A combination of linear and quadratic factors. That's all you have to do. And the real zeros are the three we've got here. The last two zeros are complex numbers with, with uh, imaginary parts. So you don't have to do that anymore. Find the real zeros would be what I would say. Find all the factors, linear and quadratic factors, and the real zeros. There's your real zeros, and here are your linear and quadratic factors. The book takes it a little further and does the plus 2i, minus 2i, and then they write this as the last two factors be x plus 2i and x minus 2i. You're not having to do that, okay? This is as far as you have to take it. Does that make sense? There's a checkpoint there with three possibilities. I would say go for it, folks. And we still got time to spare. Isn't this wonderful? Okay. The answer is yes. Okay. Uh, do I need to leave that a little bit longer? Okay. If I were giving this question on the test, I would have said, where they said, uh, write this as a product of linear factors, I would have said write it as a product of linear and non-reducible quadratic factors, okay? And list all the real zeros of the function, okay? So, linear factors and non-reducible quadratic factors, that would have been this, the real zeros of the function. That's all you'd have had to do for me. They were asking a little bit more, but since our course description doesn't require the complex part, I'm not requiring you to, to do that. What's that? Uh, as soon as we finish 2.6, which I thought was going to be a little sooner than now, but it's probably going to be next week. Okay? It won't be this week. Huh? And, and with us missing maybe next Thursday, it might be the week after, too. Yeah, so. Oh, terrible. Okay. All right. Now, what's that? You're not. Oh, y'all are so kind. So kind. I can't believe this. All right. Everybody got it? Okay. This is just carrying on. Okay. Other tasks for poly zeros of polynomials. You know what we're doing? We're filling our tool belt with all the tools we can get to find these zeros. We've got the rational zeros test. We've got 
synthetic division. These are all tools we use. Let's do some others. Okay. All right. Y'all are ready to go, aren't you? You know that an nth degree polynomial function can have at most n real zeros. It will have n zeros, but at most n real zeros. Of course, many nth degree polynomials do not have that many real zeros. That last one did. It was a fifth degree polynomial, I had three real zeros. For instance, f of x equals x squared plus one will have two complex zeros, but no real zeros. Okay? This one has one real zero and two complex zeros. Okay? You may not know that, but you really do without thinking about it. You, you really do know that. Okay. So what we're going to do, how close are we? Huh? Oh, it is fast. I thought my clock was fast. All right, we'll stop there. Sad news, okay? We'll start next time with the Cartes Rule of Science. Okay. Good deal. Oh, let me give you a few homework exercises. Oh, I knew you didn't want me to forget that. Okay. Any of the odds 9 through 13, either 15 or 17, or both. Any of the odds 19 through 27, uh, 29 or 31, or both. 33 or 35, or both. 37 or 39, or both. 41 or 43, or both. And... I would say 45 to 49 you can forget about. Uh, or at least don't worry with the imaginary parts. Okay? Um, okay. 51 or 53 or both. Any of the odds 55 to 61. Okay, wait. Don't worry about the imaginary parts, and every one of those has imaginary parts. Uh, any of the odds 63 through 79, and any of the odds 81 through 85. And we'll stop there and pick up the rest of those later. Okay. And I'm still receiving research papers, hint, hint, and also the last quizzes. Please get those in. What's that? You need the quiz. I need a quiz, but I need a completed quiz. Okay. I'm sorry. We should give these last quizzes out. Oh, right. When we finished 2.3, whenever that was, we're in 2.5 now, but we didn't do a lot in 2.4, so. Okay. I'll get to it in a minute. I'm never here on Thursdays. Okay. How are you doing so far? Oh, I'm sorry. There's a quiz. Do you need graph paper? Okay, I've got a minus on here. Huh? You got some? Okay. Today is the first day I actually caught on to them. Before this? Well, with chapter two. Oh, okay. You know, the first part. I mean, I, I, I guess I forgot how to do it. Yeah. So, yeah well, that's why I'm running from that test. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're doing well now, so hang hang in there and keep plugging. I, I mean, I know this. Excellent. Last, yeah. This is the toughest stuff we've done. So way to go. Yeah. Now you'll see the other part. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. What's that?